This video is sponsored by Huber Engineered Wood. All right, guys, so we have, I think, what was it, like a 17-foot or a 16-foot LVL ridge to install. And I don't have a little laser dot, but I'm just gonna use our LAR 350. I've already cut in our LVL and marked the top. By the way, yes, I know that it's too tall. That's not the point. We just tacked with a couple of screws our two by 10 block. Now what I'm gonna do is just turn on the laser. I have a five inch difference in height. I'll show you the pitch block here in just a second. So here's what I want to show you. Here's what I wanna show you. If I hit shift and this button, I can slow down the laser. Okay, so now it's stopped. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go up the roof and I'm gonna mark two lines. Okay, so there we go. Okay, here's where the pitch block comes in. Because I have a five inch rise difference between the laser and the top of my ridge, I just cut a pitch block. <clears throat> and now that is the top of my ridge be perfectly level. If I was to if I was to do this start to finish with no camera work, it'd probably take us like 3 minutes to get this all dialed in since I don't have a 17 foot level. What I'm going to get though is just a little laser unit that just shoots out a regular dot because the dot will show up brighter than a beam. So that's why we went with the uh, LAR 350. <laughs> I just love that, man. It up yeah, so it's it's exactly the height, and then we'll fill in underneath. Okay, look out real quick. Look at that. Not bad, not bad at all. Right on the money. And just come right past this corner like me. We'll see what you are. The ridge is level. Now we just need to make sure that it is square to that outside rake wall. Since the rake wall was built with identical overhangs, we just hook our tapes on the outside of the gable end trim. Once those numbers are equal, then we're square. What I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna mark this so that we know where it's at. And we're so close to that. I like to land my ridge on the sleeper valleys and we use two by 12 sleeper valleys. That's what our engineer specifies. That allows us to put more nails through the sleeper into the roof deck. Since the offset on these blade left saws is inch and a half, all I gotta do is ride the sheathing and I get exactly inch and a half. Then I'm just gonna, well, you'll see it here in just a second. I'm gonna slide the sleepers underneath. If you do any cutting on the roof, make sure you blow it off because you don't want to slip and fall. So 29.16 is my pitch. I'm gonna hit hip valve. It does all the trigonometry in the background. I'm looking for the hip backing angle, which is 20.15. 20.15, 20 times two, minus 90. So subtract from 90, so ignore the negative. That's 49.7. So I'm gonna set my saw to just under 50, five zero, just under 50 degrees. I'm going to say this, I want to be super clear, you do not have to bevel your sleeper valley. A lot of people use one by. For years, we've used two by 12, as our engineer specs it, and we did not bevel them. For about the last year and a half though, I have been beveling them. Hey, hey, hey. Come 
Come on now, come on now. You can do it, Timmy, you can do it. Yes, I know. It sounds like I am absolutely killing that saw. <laughs> I'm not. And frankly, I don't care. If I burned up, I've never burned up a saw, by the way. But if I do, then I'll get another one. Tools are made to be used. Not bad, not bad at all. That Diablo blade has cut more than a few nails and it's still powered through nicely. And the Martina stair gauge, I can pinch this, but then I get a bunch of people that tell me it's not safe and I'm almost banned on TikTok because of it. So we're using the Martina stair gauge. Okay, anyway, back to why I like to bevel the sleeper. It makes it easier to set the valleys. It makes it a little bit easier to lay out and set your jacks into those valleys. Take and two. I just like the way it looks. Hopefully that's far enough away. Okay, here's how we figure out the miters for the sleeper valley. They're the same as the sheathing angle. So 29.16, not 2000, 29.16. I'm gonna hit pitch. You can see that. Hip valve. Did all the trigonometry in the background. This is the one I want. Oops, do this one more time. Boy, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we don't want we don't want that. Okay, let's do this again. Oh, I'm just I'm just hitting all the wrong buttons. I'm such an idiot. Okay, 29.16 pitch. Okay, that's the slope of our roof. I hit, and since it's all the same, it's a regular roof. So 29.16, I hit the hip valve. It does the trigonometry in the background. Here's the number I'm looking for is the sheathing angle, 48.87. Uh, so I'm gonna round that to 49, so I already know. Minus 48.87 is 41.13, so I'm gonna say 49 and 41. So I'm gonna say 49 for this one. And I'm gonna write that down, 49. And since I have the bevels on the same, but I, I want the sleepers to be opposite, I'm gonna go 41 for this guy. 41 degrees, I just extend this in. The 49 is actually the one that's gonna go at the top next to the ridge. Okay, so that one was 49. I'm gonna go 211 and mark 41. Sharp to sharp to sharp to sharp. So 211. Sharp to sharp, I'm gonna go 41. I'm just gonna write 41. Now this time, I know that was 41, so I'm gonna mark 49. So 211. All of our California jacks or layover jacks, whatever you want to call them, cut out a two by six. Crown everything to the right of the camera. I make my plumb cuts on the ends and then my seat cut or compound miters in the middle. The way I like to measure these or remember it is I'm measuring sharp to sharp to sharp to sharp to sharp. Sharp of the plumb cut to the sharp of the seat cut to the sharp of the bevel. By cutting through the middle, I now have the cut for the opposite side of the, of the roof by making one cut. So plumb cuts on the edge. Now as I go through the middle, these are gonna be the compound miters. But now see the cut, the leftover or the scrap? That cut now is the opposite side of the roof cut. So I like to do this so that I'm only making one compound miter and I'm getting two jacks out of it. Also, even though we're crowning our material and we're trying to make it nice and clean, we're cutting out any of the excess crown for most of these rafters until we get to the little tiny ones. So in a sense, we're gonna have a flatter roof, 
because we took our straightest material and then we cut it. it in half, so to speak, yeah. or thirds or, or whatever it is, but you get the point. Our longest jack and our shortest jack come out of the same piece. Then our second longest, second shortest come out of the same piece, third longest, third shortest, etc. Now, we've set our two by 12 sleepers. They're centered under the LVL ridge. And what I'm doing is I'm eyeballing it straight and then I'm gonna nail it into the rafters under the sheathing. I'm not nailing it into the sheathing itself, like in between rafters, but I'm aiming for meat. We want a good solid connection. So this is why we call it an overframe or layover valley, is because it literally overframes. Now some people are gonna say that what I'm standing on there is a waste, that I shouldn't have sheathed the roof. I appreciate your opinion, but our structural right. engineer wants the entire roof deck sheathed, the blocks on the glue land below. You now, probably saw that in previous videos. Off. Then we go ahead and we sheath this one. Then later we're gonna cut a hole for access for the insulators and the trades. If I cut a hole now, then I could fall in. I'm wearing the fall protection. To be quite frank, I don't think I need it here. Where am I going to fall? When I get out to the edges, well, then, then I'm exposed to a leading edge. But right here, there's no place to fall. I'm wearing it to set a good example <laughs> because I'm on YouTube. So there it is. If I wasn't doing this for YouTube, I wouldn't be wearing it right here because there's no place to fall. Competent person, right? It's all about training. And the Benjamins. Standard practice, especially with a single ply ridge, is to get those middle jacks locked in. We want the ridge to be nice and straight. Now, if you calculate this all by the math, then you especially wanna make sure that ridge is straight because even though the math is perfect, if we're out of um, parallel or things have bows or whatever, then it's gonna throw it off. So the math might be perfect, but it won't work. I did not do that in this case. I went ahead and just laid them out. It was quicker. There's so few jacks that it was just quicker to pull layout and cut them. So I'm gonna go ahead and set these by myself. I've got Noah cutting some blocking. The easy way to set California jacks is to tack a nail just a little downhill of your layout mark at the sleeper. Nail the top first at the ridge, then you simply just move the rafter to layout and nail it off. Nice and easy. Two by six also super lightweight, so that's pretty, pretty easy. Since the ridge is straight, I felt okay. I mean, it is an inch and three quarter by 14. Uh, many of us might think that's overkill. I can't say that it is or isn't because I don't have the know-how to calculate the loads. So I don't have an opinion. Well, I mean, I do, but I don't have an informed opinion. <laughs> There's a difference, right? Oh man, gotta love it. We're all we're all equally opinionated. Some of us just misspell and use all caps on the internet. I digress. I have to be honest. This is probably one of my favorite parts of framing. And the reason is, is it tends to go quickly. We've already pre-cut all of our rafters on the ground, even though we laid out and took our measurements up on the hill, or up on the hill, up on the roof. But I've got a safe place to stand, so I don't have to be too concerned about that. And now it's just assembling it. And that's just very satisfying. I, it's kind of satisfying to watch. At least I think it is. Maybe, maybe some of you would agree with me, maybe not. It's super satisfying to actually just put it together. I think a lot of us as framers, this really is our favorite part. What isn't my favorite part is adding all the blocking. I went over that in a previous video. We have to have edge nailing for our roof sheathing. We also have to have ventilation, so our blocks have been beveled to match the roof pitch, and they're notched in the middle to allow for airflow. Now, there's only a couple spots for airflow. On the bottom left and the bottom right, you can see we only have two rafter bays, but all of our soffit is vented, and then of course we have ridge vent, and like I mentioned, we're going to cut a nice big hole so that we have access into this area. Also, before we sheet this roof, we're going to pull that sheathing out. <laughs> Ask, I've, I've gotten lazy before. I've been like, I, I can pull it down through the ceiling joist. Nope. So pull it out before you sheet the roof. Okay. This entire roof, by the way, I framed with the Passload XP nailer. I think I've mentioned this in previous videos at least a thousand times. It is not the perfect gun for production framing because you can only put one strip of nails in it. However, the convenience of being cordless, or as I like to say, hoseless, often makes up for that. To me, this is one of those instances. I don't mind reloading a little bit more often 
because I don't have anything to trip on. I don't even have the rope or lifeline to trip on at this point. You notice I'm detached. I got nowhere to go. His bevels are cool. They are? Super. Nah, we don't, I mean, we don't need to structurally, but I really do find that it kind of simplifies installing. All right, so the overframe is framed. Next thing is just to sheet it and then tape the sheet, sheeting. Easy for me to say. For about the last year, we've been beveling the sleepers. No, no real reason other than I just like it. Uh, if I'm using the math, it simplifies some of the calculations. And if I'm not using the math, I just like it. So Ben Morton convinced me to do it. The block detail, we do bevel those because it's pretty easy with the table saw. They don't also don't need to be. And then we've got air notches for the um, bridge vent. What I'm going to do after one side is sheeted is I'll cut a hole out. That allows access from down below into this area. But for safety, it's easy to run around and not fall in. So that's why we do that. Now there's what it looks like beveled. Can't see anything with these polarized glasses. Yes, I know there's a gap there. Don't tell anybody. It opened up when I was moving things around, but hey, still pretty good. You can see that the, come on, auto level. You can see that the shoulders of the LVL plane. I mean, if I was real trick, then I would have beveled the LVL too, but that's just crazy. That's just crazy. Now let's get super controversial. When it comes to these roofs, I like to sheathe from the top down. It's just a personal preference. Some people, I had one guy, it's just like kind of go, like get real personal. That I'm fighting gravity and it's physics and it's this and that. I'm like, well, I'm really not because I got nails tacked to hold the sheets. I understand what he's saying. I'm not fighting gravity. I do have to overcome gravity. Here's the reason why I like to sheathe from the top down. It's because I want to stay nice and parallel to my ridge and work my way down. Sometimes when you start from a small fascia line, you can get things thrown out of parallel with the ridge because you're starting out with such a small piece. This is not the right way. I don't think it's the wrong way. It's just the way I like to do it. We've been doing this a long time this way. Keeps it nice and parallel. I can walk this roof, it's safe. Is it a little bit harder? I really don't think so. I think it's just different, but whatever. So what I try to do is start with a full sheet in the middle. And that way I can give my cut man, Noah, in this case, I can give him other measurements. So the eight footer means no cutting. I can just put it in. I want to get him a valley piece. I can either calculate a pattern. I can measure the first piece and he can keep a pattern. Or when there's so few pieces, I can just measure top and bottom and then nothing gets messed up. Pretty straightforward, right? This is not, as we say, I think I say this in every video, it's not rocket surgery. That's a direct quote from our engineer. <laughs> so one of the advantages of the beveled valley is nailing into that beveled valley. Again, it's not a requirement structurally. It's just one of those little moments that is satisfying. I'm not gonna try to justify it. If you're somebody that just absolutely thinks it's not worth the, the 10 minutes at best that it, it takes, more power to you. I agreed with you for many years. I guess as I'm getting older, there's just these little moments of satisfaction. I don't know. It's again, I'm not gonna try to tell anybody that they should or shouldn't. You can see how to bevel them. You can see how to calculate the bevel. It's whatever the bevel angle is times two minus 90. That's it. Okay, now we're to the bottom, which means I have a nice straight edge at the top. I have a nice straight edge at the bottom. Since that facial line might not be perfectly parallel, I'm always gonna measure it in perfect two, two places. Nowhere on this channel have I ever said that we're perfect, nor do I even try to be perfect. We're just trying to get this thing framed and frame it right and frame it structurally right. Okay, so what do I say? What do I say? This is kind of fun. I enjoy it. I just like it from the top down. Part of it too is I've got a place to stand, right? I can straddle the uh, California Jacks. I can walk in between them. I've got nails there. Look, I'm not even holding it. And it's a 712, so 
I'm not fighting anything. But I totally understand people who think that it's stupid. I don't think it's stupid, but whatever. I, I, enough of that. Enough of that. For some reason on this side, I changed things up. I want my sheets. Notice on the left, I have vertical or four foot seams that center on four by eight sheets. I don't know why I shifted this on this side. The top row was correct and it doesn't matter. It's just that I, I wanted it to look symmetrical for the drone shots <laughs> and it didn't. Whatever, whatever. I'm trying to give Noah as many angles or cuts. I think what I was trying to do is use the cutoff from his previous sheet and minimize scrap. I don't know. Again, like I said, it really doesn't matter, but ideally we do want those four foot seams centered on the eight foot panel. Again, for anyone who hasn't watched the previous videos, I'm using a high pressure coil framing nailer by Max. Because it runs off high pressure, it's lighter weight, and because it's coil, I have to reload much less often. And the nails that we use are two and a half inch by 0 0.131 inch nails. That's the nail that the engineer specifies. That's the nail we buy. It's a nice big nail. The advantage of the bigger nail is it's harder to overdrive them. And when we're using zip system roof sheathing, I don't want to be overdriving field nails. I don't want to be overdriving nails at all for structural reasons, but I don't want to have to deal with, with any repair work on that. So having the bigger nail makes it a lot easier to keep it, um, keep it from overdriving. Something I mentioned in the last video, I want to mention it again here, is that that piece, that rip, it is greater than two foot. Our rip at the top, of course, is four foot. We don't want rips that are smaller than two feet for structural reasons. Um, a lot of that has to do with just the stiffness of the panel as you walk on it. Last piece, this is the piece that comes out of the scrap, and we are done -zo. One more step, though. Well, a couple steps. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put that valley metal on. The, um, what is that called? Starter metal or eaves metal. I'm gonna put that on and tape it. The thing, can you guess? Can you guess what it is? That's right. So in this particular instance, I'm teaching Noah how I like to put the six inch tape in the valley. What I like to do is since it's six inch tape, is I snap a line three inches up on the valley and that just helps me to pull the tape straight. Straight tape is much less likely to have wrinkles and straight tape looks good. It looks good on Instagram, it looks good on YouTube. It just looks good. And again, it's one of those things you just want it to be right. So I'm just showing him, here, here's one of the, the six inch tape has liner or release paper. So what I do is I let the roll kind of slide down in the valley against my foot. And then I pull the release paper off in like maybe two foot sections as I go. And I'm just smoothing it with my hand so that it's straight on the line and that it, it goes up the valley in a nice V shape. Super easy. There's, it's not rocket science once you do it once you're gonna have the muscle memory down. Then I went ahead and took care of the left-hand roof, and now it's Noah's turn. And I gotta say, he had never been in a harness until like two days before this. I trained him up, had him practice, and he was just doing great up on the roof. One of the things was he was making sure that he was adjusting his rope grab as he went, and he was just doing a great job. So anyway, shout out to Noah. Now I'm gonna go ahead and roll all of the tape. Noah's getting his, uh, is valley tape down. We'd like to put that on. And then again, we're gonna start at the bottom. We're gonna do our vertical pieces and then our horizontal seams or longer seams. Is, I mean, you could say the cross cut seams and the rip seams. I don't know, is that clear? I don't know. You also notice on the ridge down there, we have a bunch of rolls. As you go with zip system, we have a tendency to accumulate rolls that have maybe just like 10 or 20 feet left in the roll. So they're small rolls this is a great way to use them up. <laughs> so we're not gonna throw those away. We're not gonna let them get wet. We're gonna keep track of them and use them. All right, so we are on the home stretch. I really appreciate everybody watching these videos. I hope you learned something. Even if it's, you see me do something and you're like, yeah, there's no way I would do it that way. Well, that's still learning, right? Here, here's what, 
what I don't want to do. I don't know. Anyway, remember the a fiberglass painter's pole screws into the back of the handle on the roller. That means we don't have to bend over quite so much. You can stay upright. Make sure you roll that tape. We want that acrylic adhesive to really stick. Also, we want the warranty. What's the point of using products if we're not gonna use them according to the manufacturer's instructions? Okay, so there we go. This roof is done, almost. Now, like I mentioned in the last video, an advantage of this is we're dried in, except for the ridge. We don't really care about that. What we wanna do now is we wanna get the plumbers scheduled so that they can run their vent pipes through the roof and then we can tape those. Okay, and here we go. We gotta have the obligatory shot. Yes, we're safe. We're tied off. So let's just enjoy the moment. It's done. You can see the plumbers do have their vent pipes up through the roof. That means this thing is ready for the roofers. So why not do a flyover? I don't know what Noah's doing. <laughs> but there it is. So this project really, it's taken too long but because that's because we got busy down the street doesn't matter. It's done. Over the last, I don't know, maybe five years, we really document things. So the purpose of this is, yeah, I'm flying the drone. It's B-roll for YouTube. But it also documents the fact that all the seams are taped, where the plumber's vents are, when those get taped. It, it, it just, it gives us a complete picture before it gets covered by roofing that we're always going to have. So I, it's not just the, that I'm shooting video, just for fun, really. And frankly, mostly just for the, for the YouTube channel. I'm also gonna take some pictures up there. I'll show you a couple of them here in just a minute. It shows that the valleys have been installed right, et cetera, et cetera. Now we have that for documentation purposes. And here you can see the roofers are taping the valley metal to the deck. Of course, I taped the valley underneath that. So good job, and they're rolling the tape as they go really appreciate it really easy to work with thank you everybody for following through this process i really do appreciate it i hope you learned something or at least enjoyed it and to end this video here's some obligatory selfie shots droney shots some sweet shots from the drone see you all in the next video